Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mal, this is Mel Spanks, and today we're going to be doing our March and April favourites. So I hope you guys enjoy today's video. So hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are all very well. Today I'm going to be doing my March and April favourites. So um, last month I didn't do favourites so I'm actually going to be combining the two months together of March and April to actually be showing you my favourites. So this can be craft items, TV programmes that I've been watching, for food and drinks, podcasts, board games, um, YouTube channels, non-crafty and crafty and some magazines as well that I have been reading during the month of March and April. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you liked today's video then please do give this video a like, comment and a subscribe and let's get into the video. So hi everyone, hope you guys are okay, hope you guys are enjoying your lovely weekend so far. So it's a bank holiday weekend at the moment in the UK, so everybody's having a couple, I'd say one or two, or one or two if you're lucky, um, one extra day off in the weekend, so I hope you guys are enjoying that. So today we're going to do our favourites. So the first things I'm actually going to be doing first are the magazines. As you guys know, I don't really read that much, as in book-wise. I'm still trying to get through Persuasion by um, Jane Austen, so it could be quite a while until I actually finish that. So I'm actually going to be showing you three magazines that I've been reading during the month of March and April. So the first one I'm going to show you is these two magazines. So it is Simply Cards and Paper Crafts. So this is the latest issue that they've had out. So this is issue number 229. And this actually includes a Peach Perfection set which has um some fruit stamps of peaches and pears um there in the background by the inspiration and you can actually make some fruit inspired projects and cards which i think is really fab so a lot of the design team on the simply cards and paper crafts um team have actually made these lovely cards so these are really really pretty i really really love the colors and I actually really, really love peaches as a fruit. They're one of my favourite fruits. Pear, not so massive on, but I do like the peaches. But I think these are really, really gorgeous designs that the design teams have, have put in the magazine. I'll just show you another example of some of the other cards that the team has made as I flick, as I try and quickly flick through this. But it's a really pretty um, stamp and die set. So this is by Nikki Gilbert, I think this one is. Um, and it's just um, lots of these stamps and dies being used with the set. I really love the colours. Um, and some of the um, designs that the team have actually come up with are super pretty. And these are ones that she's done here on this page. So that is the latest issue of Simply Cards and Paper Crafts, so that's 229. Again, what I'll do is I'll put the information of the magazines that I mentioned and all the products and uh, the podcast TV programs, for example, I'll mention in the box below so that you guys can actually um, refer to the bits that I'm talking about in the video. The next one I've got here is Paper Craft Essentials. This is issue 211 and this actually features a quilling set. So if you've actually been interested in quilling, for example, then you get this set and actually Lou Collins, who's the lovely lady, is pictured with the quilling set. You actually get to learn some tips and tricks from her that she has um, found through the process of doing some lovely quilling projects. So that is issue 211 of Papercraft Essentials with the bright pink cover. Absolutely lovely. So if you've been into quilling, then um, please do have a look at that magazine. I know that Hilary from Pink Bowl Craft, she does a lot of quilling, so I'll leave her channel in the box below. Then the last one I'm actually going to recommend is this one. This is A Year of Cards. Um, now this actually comes as an extra supplement to one of the magazines. I can't remember which one it is. I think it's either Sentimentally Yours by Phil, by Phil Martin, or it's Creative Stamping maybe. But this is a year of cards. So this actually shows you some projects that have been done by design teams of various magazines. And they just amalgamate them into one issue. Um, I'll show you the one that I've actually done for this one. I've actually, I actually made this card um, quite some time ago. But this is the one here. This is by me. 
and it's known as Issue. So this is the one with the cake. So this is actually made by Lawn Fawn Sweet Things. It's a really lovely set. It's just got lots of cakes and lots of donuts, for example. And you can actually put like the faces and stuff in them. So there's the ones with the donuts and the cakes. Then you've got the ones with the cakes here on your on well on my right essentially. So it's just got some lovely cards in there, and that is a year of cards. You can actually get this as a standalone copy. But it actually comes with one of the magazines that you can find in your local stockist. So that is the third magazine that I will be recommending for the month. Only because it's got a little bit more work in there, which I'm actually really, really proud of. Um, but it's got some great designs in there by other um, design team members from various magazines that have been um, compiled into one magazine. So if you really want some inspiration, then please do go and check out that magazine. So those are the magazines for the month of uh, March and April. The next things I'm actually going to recommend are food and drink. So the first drink I'm actually going to recommend is this one. This is the Robinson's Real Fruit Orange Squash. Before March, I hadn't really consumed a lot of like fruit. I'm normally like a Diet Coke, Coke Zero kind of person. But I've actually really gone into trying to drink a lot more water. So I've actually been drinking a lot of squash. I've literally just put like a tiny, tiny, absolutely minuscule amount of squash into my cup and then just adding water on top. This is really lovely. So this is just the Robinsons one, but you can get them in like different flavours. Like apple and blackcurrant is one of my favourite, but I'm really on this kind of crazy citrus boost at the moment so i've really loved the orange one and uh, me and my mum have actually been drinking this this is a one and three quarter liter bottle um i normally ask my husband to get the one liter bottle but um he always gets this big one and we normally get through it within like a fortnight because me and my me and my mum have been drinking lots of orange so this is one of the drinks that i would recommend for this month the second item, food item, that I'm going to recommend for this month is this one. This is the carrot and coriander soup. This is by Heinz, but you can get like different brands of this soup. I really, really love this. Um, coriander as a um, herb is not a massive herb that I'm actually massively keen on. My mum is definitely not a fan of coriander. But mixed with this carrot is actually really, really lovely. It's actually one of my favourite soups. It's also a classic. So I've really gotten into a cor uh, carrot and coriander soup. I always keep spoonerising them all the time. I'm calling it a corret and coriander soup. But it's definitely one of my favourites. And then the last item that I'm going to recommend for a food and drink item is a M&S toffee sundae. If you guys love sweet treats and you really like flavour, like a toffee flavour, um, then this is definitely the sundae for you. It's got um, a toffee sponge on the top, toffee like little sprinkles, um, some cream, then the toffee sauce and then a toffee um, whipped cream at the bottom. Really, really lovely. I normally go for the chocolate one at M&S and it's definitely a sweet treat that I'll try and like get, not necessarily as less possible, but try and get it like once a fortnight or once a month, for example. Um, I do have a massive sweet tooth, but I'm a diabetic, so it doesn't quite um, work as well if I have too much sugar. But um, I always don't mind a treat like every now and again. So that's something that I would recommend. Any um, items that I can't obviously show in my hand, for example, I'll put it on the right hand side of the screen. So those are the food and drink recommend, uh, recommendations for March and April. So my next recommendation is for podcast. Now, as you guys know, I really like um, listening to the Parent in Hell one by Rob Beckett and Josh Whitaker. And um, this time around, I'm actually going to recommend a quiz one and it's called Trivial Warfare. It's run by the Oaks Media Group. It's a US kind of um, media group. Um, they're based in Jacksonville, Florida, I think. It's run by Jonathan Oakes. He has like um, other co-presenters as well on the channel. And they basically get quiz competitors or competitors from different um, from different US states, for example. They also do um, people from Europe, the UK, for example, Australia, New Zealand, um, lots of different places that actually have 
um, people who are into quizzing who really want to take part in this quiz and it's basically like six or seven rounds of questions and then they do like um, a tiebreaker or a, a um, final question at the end if you'd like to listen to that podcast I'll leave it in the box below with a little bit of information about Trivial Warfare I've actually been listening to it for a couple of years I try to listen to it on the train for example if I'm going somewhere or if I'm on the bus for example going on a journey to the shops for example and um, I try and have it on so that I can actually try and get a little bit more of knowledge essentially or quiz knowledge and they always do questions not necessarily based on like US history or anything they always do ones that are kind of more broader and a little bit more global as well so that is the podcast that I'm going to recommend for um, March and April so I hope you guys enjoy that podcast so my next um, favourites are going to be on screen favourites so these are basically going to be um, um, four programmes or three or four programmes that I'm going to recommend to you guys for March and April these are either TV programmes um, things that you can watch on Freeview for example or online so the first program that I'm going to recommend if you can actually watch it back which you probably will be able to is MasterChef now MasterChef I always watch MasterChef I always watch MasterChef the professionals as well which is with Greg Wallace uh, Marcus Waring and Monica Galletti and that will probably come up further down the line during the course of the year but I really love MasterChef the professionals I think it's a really really good program I think MasterChef as a concept is is great I actually used to watch it before back in the 90s when it was Lloyd Grossman who first um, presented it and had the three kitchens I don't know if anybody actually remembers this it's like three kitchens in the studio and they basically have to cook stuff but this time they actually get like eight contestants in at a time and they do it like that instead so they changed it completely um, they completely turned it on its head and I absolutely love MasterChef. Uh, the current series of MasterChef is actually coming to an end very, very soon. I think next week is the um, final week for the for the three contestants who are left in the final. So that's going to be really, really exciting. Uh, MasterChef is presented by John Tarode and Greg Wallace. So if you've watched it through the years and you've really, really enjoyed it, it's definitely a recommendation that I'd actually... Um, ask you guys to watch um, especially if you like cooking cookery um, I know that some of my friends don't really like Greg Wallace for example but I find him so funny at times and John Tyrone is just hilarious as well um, so I definitely recommend MasterChef if you can't watch finals week definitely go through the whole program on iPlayer it's BBC iPlayer it's available on online so please do go and have a look at MasterChef the next program that I'm going to recommend that I've been watching through March and April and has actually just come to an end, which is Interior Design Masters with Alan Carr. Now, Interior Design Masters, I kind of looked at it in the first, I think it's, I think we're on season three now, the second series, and I just went, no, I don't, I don't really want to watch that. Alan Carr is a comedian. He's actually a really lovely guy. I think he's absolutely lovely. My husband's not a massive fan of him, unfortunately. Um, but I don't mind him. I think he's a really lovely guy. He's a great comedian as well. So he's been presenting um, interior design masters with a judge called, I think her name is Michelle, Michelle Ogundobin. Um, I'll leave both of their names in the box below when I recommend the actual, when I put the actual link in the box. But um, I find Michelle kind of quite harsh at times, but it's because she's a person who knows her expertise. She's a professional in interior design and she's the one who judges it through um, the whole competition with other guest designer judges. Um, I really like the programme. I've really actually warmed to it. Um, I've been watching this series, which is season three, and I've actually been watching the last series, which I think is season two. So I've actually really loved the programme. I've actually been watching it through all the way through. So I've really enjoyed it. Um, the final was last week. So if you can watch it on iPlayer, so it's available on BBC iPlayer, then please do go and have a look at that um, program. If you like um, interior design, um, how people actually um, initiate the concept of trying to put a room um, together, um, if you're pulling out stuff, putting back in, decoration on walls wallpapers that sort of thing and if you're someone who actually likes home decor then do tune into that program um i think the next one's pretty much along the same lines you can get it on netflix you can watch it on netflix it's um get organized by the home edit 
Now this is presented by Clear Shearer and Joanna Teplin. They are American um, professional organisers. They come into people's homes and organise their stuff. So they actually get bits from the container store that we don't have over here in the UK, but they have in the US. I honestly wish that we had a container store in the UK. Seriously, it'd be unbelievable. Can you imagine the amount of like stuff that people can actually organise like their craft bits in, craft papers? Um, and they also do everything in like rainbow order. So they normally like doing colours like red, orange, yellow, um, blue, green, purple, pink, blue white gray black whatever they always do it in rainbow color which i think is fab i just wish they had a container store in the uk that would be absolutely epic so they normally get their things from the container store or online for example and then they basically organize people's houses they've also done celebrity houses as well so that is something that you can watch on netflix if you like um organizing your craft bits organizing papers files stationery if you love labeling things if you, so if you're someone who has a cricket and you love labeling stuff i'd all show for you they always try and um label and organize stuff so that's um a um program that i would definitely recommend and then the last program that i'm actually going to recommend is um a quiz show that's on bbc iplayer it's called bridge of lies now i'm i love quizzes i'm a massive quiz person and I absolutely love quizzes. Um, judging by the podcast that I've just then recommended, which is Trivial Warfare, um, I myself love pub quizzes. So um, quizzes for me when I watch them on TV and I really, really like them, they're something that I really love to kind of get into. Bridge of Lies is definitely one of those shows. Um, you can watch it on iPlayer. Um, it is a quiz show that is hosted by Ross Kemp. So if you guys remember Grant Mitchell from EastEnders, that's the that's the same guy. And so he basically um, presents a quiz show called Bridge of Lies, and basically you get four, you get a group of four contestants. They can be family members, friends, colleagues, whoever, and they basically have to cross like this diamond shape that has been covered with um, hexagons and they basically have to step on the hexagons on the right order to create a bridge of correct answers and then all the other like all the other incorrect answers are lies so that's why it's called bridge of lies so you actually have a bridge across a stretch of lies there are times when i've wanted to throw stuff at the tv because people are just too too dumb <laughs> And I end up like, uh, and I'm really horrible at this. Sometimes I just shout at the TV, like shouting the correct answer. Like, what are you doing? Why are you stepping on that? Why is the wrong answer? And I just, I just have to do it. I just can't, I can't, I just can't stand dumbness. That's really how it really is. And some people are just really like dumb. So um, if you're someone who just loves quizzes and I totally want to get into a quiz, I would suggest Bridge of Lies. It's uh, really fun. And once you get the concept, you get really, really grabbed into it. And I, I really love it. I think it's a, I think it's a great TV program. I think they've just ended their last series. So hopefully they'll have it on again further down the, further down the year. But um, I hope you guys will um, enjoy the shows that I've recommended. So the next recommendations are going to be YouTube channels. Um, I normally suggest um, like non-crafty um, YouTubers and I'll do like one crafty YouTuber. So the two, the two non-crafty YouTubers that I'm going to recommend for March and April are um, Cooking with Babish. Now, if you're someone who loves cooking, loves doing cooking, and I mean like basics to quite kind of uh, renowned dishes, for example, um, Cooking with a Babish is definitely um, a YouTube channel that you should tune into. They do basics like pancakes, for example, and bread making. I don't think bread making, for example, is a simple task, but um, definitely like normal cakes, for example. He teaches you how to do the basics of like chopping things, um making like um you know spaghetti bolognese for example he covers all the basics and then he does kind of like these um elaborate dishes as well he also covers um foods that you get from tv programs for example so for example um there's a cartoon called steven's universe or steven universe and he creates food from that like it's a bread or a cake or um a pancake or whatever it is um and they normally create and um, they normally create foods from 
those particular programs it could be the hot dog from friends or um the chicken wings in um in SpongeBob SquarePants, it could be anything basically from various TV programs. Um, I think he's changed the name now to um, Babish Culinary Universe. Um, I'll put the link in the box below. But he does some really good cooking basics. It could be stuff from like air fried rice to chicken wings to pancakes to bread, and he obviously does the the little dishes from various TV programs as well. So if you're into food that's from a particular program, then definitely tune into that channel and put it in your subscribe list, for example, if that's something that you're into. But I think that Cooking with Babish um, is a really good YouTube channel, and I try to and I try to get tips from it because I'm not a massive cook. Uh, my dad is the one who does a lot of cooking in our kitchen and he doesn't let my mum or me or my husband go anywhere near the kitchen unless we're obviously trying to get food from the fridge in the kitchen um, from the kitchen essentially or trying to bring it back to our rooms to actually eat and um, he tries to not let us be in the kitchen essentially um, when he's in the kitchen when he's in the kitchen cooking so we just leave him to it so I'm not a massive like cook but um, I really would love to learn how to cook. I only know now to do like basics like omelettes and um, like um, shepherds and cottage pie and um, chicken that you put in a bag and then put in the oven because I'm not a massive cook. But um, I really would love to learn some cooking techniques and some cooking styles. So definitely um, tune in to um, Babish. I'll leave the link in the box below. The next non-crafty YouTuber that I'd like to recommend is Geography Now. So if you're someone who likes geography, um, locations, places to go, um, country profiles, um, information about the country, populations, capital cities, um, economic, political, social development, that sort of thing, then you can tune into Geography Now. It's a really good um, YouTube um, channel that really does like to promote other countries and really does love to kind of profile countries that they run through. So they're actually going to go through the whole numbers of countries. So for example, they started from A and they're going to end up with Z. So I think they're at T at the moment. So you can actually go and um, watch the you can actually go and watch the videos of the country profiles on the channel um so if that's something that you're into so if you're into geography locations profiles country country profiles flags if you like flags and you're a vexillology person then totally go for that um i really like geography now because i like to find out more about flags and country profiles so if i like to learn a little bit more about country for example then i tune into that channel and that's the channel those are the two non-crafty channels that i'm going to recommend the one that i'm going to recommend that is crafty is paper mona who is monica i'll leave her channel in the box below and um, monica is someone that i've technically recently subscribed to probably within the last eight weeks or so probably a little bit more um because i found her out through other channels through other crafty channels and i really love her artwork at the moment she's kind of she's doing an alphabet challenge so it's not the typical A, B, C, D and E. It's kind of like letters that are associated with the months of the year. So as it's April, she's been creating things with um, A materials or A letter materials, so alcohol inks. Um, I think she used an angel on her last one. So she's done A. So next one will be May. So you can actually just pick a topic from M. So if you wanted to do a masculine card, if you wanted to do a mosaic card, for example. So she launches the chat, she launches the challenge from the 10th until the end of that month. So as it'll be the 10th of May, she'll do it from the 10th of May to the 30th or the 31st of May. And then at the end of that month, you can actually win a prize if you've taken that part. I'll leave her hashtag and her channel in the box below. So please do go and have a look at her videos. I think she's immensely creative. She's really, she does some really elaborate things. She does a lot of mixed media as well. So please do go and check out um, Monica's channel. She's a fab crafter. So I'm actually just rewinding through her videos at the moment. So I'm really looking forward to looking at all that content. But those are the YouTube um, channels that I'm going to be recommending for March and April. 
So my penultimate favourite at the moment is going to be board games. So um, after board games, I'm going to do the crafty items and that will be the last um, favourite that I'm going to be recommending for March and April. So my favourite board game for March and April is going to be Splendour. Now me and my husband play Splendour quite a bit in our house, especially when it's just me and my me and my husband in the house. Um, sometimes my mum comes and interrupts us while we're watching or when we're playing the game, which she doesn't mind. She just watches us in the corner while we're playing. Um, because my husband, I'm not massively competitive at a lot of things, but my husband pretty much, like, is. Although, personally, like, when I start going through games and I just continuously lose, I might throw a tiny tantrum. But um, I really love Splendor. It's a really good game. It's basically about obtaining jewels to buy particular um, other jewels, if that makes any sense. And then if you... Um, if you have as many jewels then you can actually buy a merchant who's interested in buying the jewels so when you start off with the game you actually have five i think it's five or six counters um and they should basically um you get five or six sets of counters so you could get um so you got emeralds rubies sapphires diamonds um and you get one more i think and i can't remember which one it is um i'll put the i'll put the list of the jewels that you actually get in the left hand corner but what you need to do is that you need to have 10 counters out of those jewel sets so you can pick like three of one or two of one for example so you only have like 10 for example and then you basically buy jewels from these cards that are in the set so the set actually come in different levels so you have like um, a beginner intermediate and higher so the higher cards are actually worth more jewels and then the lower sets are actually worth less jewels so if you wanted to get an extra diamond then you may have to just pay one like sapphire for example but if you wanted to get an e um if you want to get an intermediate jewel um level then you have to invest more jewels in buying that card as soon as you have a particular set of cards so for example at the end of like a you don't do them in rounds you just do them as you play along and then what you need to do is if you have three rubies three sapphires and there is a merchant a jewel merchant at the top of the board that you would like to invest in then you can actually um, hand those over back into the card set and then you can just buy that um, jewel merchant you need to have at least I think it's 15 points and each of the cards are actually worth a number so you might have an intermediate card that's worth three you might have a higher level card that's worth five you might have a beginner card that actually is worth two and then you obviously have to make up 15 um and that's how you win the game if for example um your opponent gets more of the higher cards and there's less of them for example so if he buys like an a higher set card that is like worth five another one is worth five another one is worth five um he gets to 15 first and he wins the game um and then the points at the top with the jewel merchant obviously count as well so if he's obviously invested a lot of jewels and buy a particular merchant or higher set um higher set card values then you win the game as well it's just the point of trying to get to 15 but with less cards as possible if your opponent that you know is getting towards 15 but they've got more cards than you are you will win the game with less cards. So I hope that kind of explains the game a little bit. Um, I'll put the link of the board game in the box below and also set, um, I'll try and see if I can find a PDF of the rules as well for Spender because it's a really good game. Um, I, I really enjoy playing it with uh, my husband. So um, I hope you guys will enjoy that game as well. And the last of my favourites are crafty favourites. So I've got a few items here that i like to share with you guys. So I hope you guys um, will be inspired by these uh, lovely crafty items. So the first one I'm actually going to show you is enamel dots. These are definitely a favourite in my collection. These are the ones from Ulta New. So these actually, this is an old set of the Ulta New ones. Because they actually have ones that actually are in um they're kind of um set colors so you've got ones that are like pinks or pinks or reds or greens or blues this is from a older series i think this is from either the new day collection 
um this one's quite rare to find essentially um i try and get them through seven hills crafts or dice to die for but i really love the enamel dots um you can just get cheaper ones like from i know that hobbycraft do a really good set now i know that um crafty wizard or a uk site that i've actually uh, found out about they do really good enamel dots as well so if you find enamel dots and you really really like them these are some ones that are from um i think it's freckled fawn and these are the ones that I got from there and these are the old new ones. I'll try and put a link of some of the enamel dots that I have but these are some of my favourites that I actually use from Ongtenu. They're really really lovely. As you guys know I'm absolutely obsessed with enamel dots. You can also get them from like Doodlebug for example. Um, lots of kind of American companies do them but I'm trying to find like more kind of cheaper ones because at best um, enamel dots are actually quite expensive and if you have like Nouveau drops for example they're a great alternative to enamel dots. Um, I'm not a massive person on Nouveau drops only because like my technique is absolutely like horrendous and it goes everywhere um, but I think I just need more practice. Um, I've got some Nouveau drops in the corner here just behind my printer so i definitely need to master my technique but this is definitely a favorite with enamel dots so if you like enamel dots then please try and invest in a few even if they're like one or two colors or even just a colorful set like this one this is really really lovely so enamel dots if you want to add texture to your work then please do consider them um the next ones i've actually got are some simon hurley ink pads so these are ones that I actually use with stencils. Um, these are kind of the kind of beginner kind of colours that I got. These are ones that I got for Christmas. Um, so this is Crown Me, which is this gorgeous purple. Um, I've also got this one, which is Tropical Tango. And I've also got this one that has, is called Piggyback. Um, I've actually got a haul coming up, I think, um, in the middle of next month or maybe in the first week of, or the first week of May, that I'll be putting up, um, that I'll be putting up, that I have a haul um, of Simon Hurley inks that I've actually decided to invest in. Um, I did buy some, um, I think I bought some Lawn Fawn ones um, that I haven't really used and I've sold them off now. Because I've just decided to invest in these her and um, these Simon Hurley ones. They're really, really lovely. They blend in beautifully with stencils. I've actually bought a few more inks from the Simon Hurley set, which I'm really, really excited to buy. So I think in the um next haul video that I'm actually gonna put up next week or maybe the week after, um, I've actually bought um quite a few from um I think I bought them from Bumbleberry Crafts. So um yes I'll put that I'll put that whole um that whole video up very very soon um which I'm really really excited about. So if you're someone who's really into blendable inks that would really love it to merge with like stencils for example these are perfect for them. These are absolutely gorgeous blendable colors. I don't know how many there are actually in the collection but I've really enjoyed using them. Um I've also loved using some stencils. I'm absolutely like stencil obsessed at the moment. So this is the ones I've bought. Again, these will be in the whole video as well. These are some Vicky Beaton um, stencils that I got. So um, I actually got these from, I think I got these from eBay actually. Um, and these actually come in a set of three. So this is one of the stencils, which is like a um, spot one. Then I've got this one that has like these diamond patterns on them that make a cross. So I hope my camera is focusing properly. And then I've got this one as well, which has these gorgeous flowers on them. I've bought a couple of sets of the Vicky Beaton stencils only because when I get stencils, like from um, my favourite things or lawn fawn, they're normally about four or five pound each. Whereas these were like five ninety nine for three, which I think is a really good deal on stencils because most of the stencils that i would normally get are from like my favorite things and if they're costing four or five pound for each stencil and i'm getting these for like five pound 550 for three i think that's a really good buy so i've actually bought a few of these at the moment i think i've got about three or four sets maybe because they always keep coming out with new ones i've actually just bought two from the sweet rush collection by again by vicky Beaton. i've actually got the haul for that again i'll put that up in the next um couple of weeks or so 
um because i've just recently got it but i've really enjoyed using these stencils i think they're really really fun so that is my next crafty essential um that i really would recommend to you guys and then the last one that i'm going to recommend that i've also been loving that i've used for the last um couple of um projects that i've put up on the channel um, one was the five by art, uh, the five by five art for Cheryl Simone Crafts giveaway, and also for Lisa, who's the crafting diva, for her art as well, because they were doing um challenge um giveaways, and it is the Fairy Garden by Doodlebug. I'm not sure how available this um collection is. I see it pop up every now and again. But this is definitely one of my favourite Doodlebug collections. It's absolutely beautiful. It's got some really gorgeous patterns. I hope that my camera will be able to focus. So you've got like fireflies, for example. You've got the gingham print, like the tartan print there. You've got a pink print. You've got ones with flowers. Um, the bees, the fireflies, the rainbows, for example. I just really love the colour palette of this collection is definitely definitely one of my favorites and um, to be fair i love doodlebug but i have probably a top three favorite of doodlebug products and this is definitely one of them so i'm trying to savor as much of this paper as possible i really really love this so this is the paper pad and i've also just got bits of the fairy garden collection here as well it has the lovely fairies and uh I love these fairies, these fairies are so cute. And you've got mushroom flowers, you've got a couple of hedgehogs, mushroom houses, words and stuff. So the words are actually on, on the reverse side. And this is the um, pack of the die cuts that you get with that set. Doodlebug are actually coming up with a new collection, which is, I think it's called My New Home or My New Place. Again, I'll put the name of it in the left hand corner of the screen, but I'm really looking forward to that collection. I always try and make sure that I get um, Doodlebug collections because I find over a space of time they actually kind of, um, they kind of disappear off um online availability so i try and um get the latest doodlebug collection if i can possibly do so and then just try and use it as i go along and as i wish to but i definitely want to try and get another one of this if i possibly can because this is definitely one of my favorite collections so those are my crafty favorites for march and april so I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed the favourites that I've recommended. Um, all of the recommendations that I um, have suggested in the video, I'll put in the description box below. Um, so I hope you guys will um, have a look at them. If you wish to purchase them, then please do. Um, if you don't really are not into some of the stuff that I've recommended, that's absolutely fine as well they're just favorites that i have spanned through march and april so hopefully for may we'll start it off with uh, may at the end of may for my may favorites which i'm really really looking forward to so i'm definitely going to be scanning through the month of may and um, some of my crafty and some of my crafty and um favorites throughout tv podcasts board games and um, food and drink and magazines as well so definitely look forward to and um, doing that at the end of may so I hope you guys have enjoyed um, this video. If you like this video, then please do give this video a like and a comment. And if you haven't done so already, then please do subscribe to the channel. I'd really, really appreciate it. All you guys who have left likes and comments over the course of um, the channel being, um, you know, started a couple of years ago. I really, really appreciate it. I'm so grateful for you guys to um, support the channel, putting all your likes and your comments and subscribing to the channel as well. Um, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it it and to each and every one of you who have um supported the channel in any way thank you so so much so thank you so much to all you guys for tuning in today's video and i'll see you guys in my next video <music>